Hey everyone, Instructor Brooks here, and in this video, we're going to continue our series on learning misconceptions. And in this video specifically, I'm going to talk to you about the illusion of simplicity. So if you're ready to learn something, let's go. All right, guys, so what is the illusion of simplicity? Well, the illusion of simplicity is when people think that learning something should be easy and low effort, okay? Uh, I love this picture here. Uh, it would be great if this was true, uh, if you could just take the information and upload it right to your brain. Now, we're probably not, not that far off from that, but as of right now, you still got to do the old school uploading it yourself. So, uh, how common is the illusion of simplicity? Well, sadly, it's very common. So in this article and research here from Edutopia, it says students think lectures are best. And that's something I've noticed a lot, uh, whether talking to students or instructors, um, that they think lectures are the best, but all the research suggests that it's wrong. Um, just because students and instructors both um, like or prefer uh, low level, low effort learning strategies doesn't mean they're the best. Okay. A lot of times humans just like the path of least resistance, which is sit there and lecture, zone out, think about what you're going to eat later. Uh, if you're the teacher, you don't have to do anything creative. You just give the information, you know, in your head. And for some reason, people think that is best, but the research shows it's not. So why does this happen? Why do people uh, pick this method? Well, according to modern psychology, if you perceive something to be simple or low effort and easy, you're more likely to indulge in it. Well, you could say that's easy when you got a box of Oreos sitting around that are wide open or Girl Scout cookies. But uh, a lot of uh, uh, there's tons of other quotes from inspiring people that anything easy isn't worth a damn. And that could also be true as well. Uh, just because something's easy or low effort doesn't mean you're going to indulge in it. And just because something's easy doesn't mean it's the right way either. So again, this is why all of this falls under the illusion of simplicity. So why does this hinder your success? Because you're like, hey, man, I've been studying lecture, or I've been teaching with lecture, and everything's going fine. Well, okay, let me tell you this. If you're not trying to get better, you're stagnant. That means everyone else that is trying to get better is surpassing you. And that's me because I used to be one of those people that thought, hey, lecture's the way it is. Give me a lecture class if I'm a student. Let me teach with lecture if I'm an instructor. And I've realized wrong, wrong, wrong. So I'm trying to get better all the time, which is why I'm better than all the other people I'm teaching with unless they follow along with me because they're just staying behind. So how does this hinder success besides staying stagnant? Well, the illusion of simplicity allows students to justify using passive study strategies, even though it's proven to be ineffective. Uh, and even if you say, well, it is effective for me, I would say you could be more effective, right? You absolutely could. So uh, passive learning strategies are, are not bad per se. They're just strategies that uh, do not show the best uh, efficiency and effectiveness when learning for most learners. So here are some examples of passive study strategies. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do these. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is these cannot be the only way you learn. So, for example, listening or watching to lecture videos, rereading textbooks, re-looking at PowerPoint slides, watching an instructor demo something. That's a big one that I see students do a lot of. Uh, I see them say or hear them say, I just need to watch it a few times. No, you need to do it a few times, but that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, highlighting while reading and reviewing past quizzes and exams. All of these things can have a decent component of learning to it, but they're done uh, on such a mass scale that the passive strategies are overwhelming us uh, with improper ways to learn and teach. So how do, I avoid, how do I avoid the illusion of simplicity? Well, first off, and I've been trying to use this with my students, is that you need to embrace the initial discomfort and trust the process. Uh, recently, uh, it doesn't matter when this was filmed, I've been changing my entire classroom to be much more student-centered and active. And I'll be honest, the cohort I'm current, that, that I tried this out on for the first time, uh, the first exam after doing my methods, the overall class score was 5% higher than the last cohorts. And I also want to say, that the current cohort that I'm working on with this, or the one that I was, depending on when you watch this video, uh, generally has been getting the lowest scores of any cohort prior to me changing my methodology. So 
and their, t and their studying methodology. So if that's a little anecdotal evidence for you. So one study concluded that the more effort and struggle involved hallmarks of a student centered or active approach is what I like to call it, the more the students learn. So this is the exact opposite of the illusion makes uh, people think that simplicity is better uh, when really it's not the path of least resistance. It's the path of most effort at first that actually leads to the better benefits later. But this is not easy because this is a totally different mind shift for people. So what does an active approach look like? Well, students get actively engaged in learning. Just think of this, reduced hip flexion in the classroom and more conversation. So less sitting, more moving around and more activities and stations. Uh, students get actively engaged in the learning process while instructors act as a guide. So uh, the other day, a great example, uh, my entire class, they were, they were watching my lecture videos. We ha they had to get the information, uh, but there was also a lot of activities that they had to work on throughout the process. And I was going around from student to student for hours of lecture class, just helping them out individually, helping guide them, coaching them. But I was not, I never once stood up in front of the class and lectured to everybody. And you know what? The students loved it. They had uh, worked and studied harder than they probably ever have for any three or four hour period. And they their entire life. And I mean, effective studying too. So these are some more examples of some active study strategies, concept mapping, the dot method. Well, that's what I call it, but draw or trace labeling, teach it. I actually have a spreadsheet where I have students sign up to pick whatever topic they want after each, uh, each, uh, topic we have each day, they get to pick a small little tidbit that they can talk about and teach in five minutes or less, and then randomly get called on. So you're always ready to teach something and one of my favorites, but probably one of the hardest things is to write your own test questions. Uh, that's very high level, but all of those things are active study and teaching strategy. I like this quote here. In the end, we retain from our studies only that which we practically apply. And what that's pretty much saying is if you don't take it to the next level of actually applying it and having application, which if we get into another conversation about Bloom's taxonomy and the pyramid, you'll see that application is at a major point of the learning model, uh, then we just forget it. How many times are you sitting in math class or even English class? You're like, well, why, when am I ever going to use this? That's why you don't know where to put commas because the teacher didn't tell you why this would be important. Or this is why you've forgotten some of the math because you didn't realize it was important. Now you're older. Now you have to pay taxes. You have to look at compound interest. Uh, you're looking at investments. You're like, oh, I wish I had paid more attention to math class, but nobody ever showed you how it would actually apply. That was the problem. So call to action. What are you supposed to do? Well, if you aren't understanding something, here's what I'd recommend. Take at least 15 minutes to try to figure it out yourself. That's active right there. Uh, instead of just going to the teacher or Google and definitely don't go to Google. It's too simple. It's too fast. It's like meeting someone for the first time, introducing yourself, you hear their name and then 20 seconds later, you've already forgotten it. That's what Google does. And that's also what happens when you ask your teacher for the answer. Don't get frustrated if the teacher, and if you're the teacher, give the students time to do it on their own. Don't get frustrated, work through it because that initial discomfort and effort is actually going to pay off in the end for actually learning the material and improving retention, which of course everybody loves. Also, what can you do? Well, if you are a PTA student or even a PT student, this is what my homepage looks like. Become a member, get access to yes, my passive lecture lessons, but also my active study strategies for you to actually learn better. Uh, learn more active and become uh, someone who actually retains the information so you don't have to restudy everything. So if that all sounds good to you, make sure you go to instructorbrooks.com, click on the join button, go to my YouTube channel, do that as well. Hey, catch you in the next video.